Hey, on this episode of Mealy Stocks, episode 15, we're going to look at some Christmas gifts that you should have. You should be gifting yourself these things as a collector, as an investor in cards. So let's have some fun with it. Here are some gifts to hook yourself up with this Christmas. Hello, hello, welcome to episode 15 of Mealy Stocks. Man, we are having an awesome time down here in Florida in the card market. It is uh, really electric just watching everything this year and kind of starting to think about 2020 uh, from a recap perspective. But episode 15 is today, and uh, for me, it's uh, December, early, right, right around Christmas time, a few days before Christmas. So uh, um, I thought, why not make a list, a Christmas wish list, maybe a, a gift list? Uh, for you hobbyists, for you investors, for you collectors out there, on things that I, I look at and I think every single person should be having, uh, especially if you're uh, into the cards as serious as, as many people are. So we'll get into this episode tonight and have a good time with it. Uh, I always like to just give a little plug for something we got going on. So check it out. If you uh, have a chance to go to our website, mealypops.com, we have a Christmas sale and online only, if you check it out right there, online only, quadruple mealy bucks on all website purchases up until Christmas Eve. So uh, by the time you watch this, you should be a few more days or a day for you to go and get some wax, get in our breaks. You'll get quadruple mealy bucks. Those are forms of rewards points that we offer on the website. So you can use those anytime. All right, so let's get into it uh, tonight, this morning, whenever you're watching this, in the middle of the day at lunchtime. I was just kind of thinking, you know, what are some things that, uh, uh, you know, I would maybe gift myself uh, so I'm getting into the hobby or if I've been in the hobby a while, uh, what are some new things that have come out? What are some essentials? So I made up a list. I have some items next to me. I don't know how many. It's like five or six items or something. But I'll show you some images on screen. We'll talk about it. Hopefully you'll learn something from this and maybe why I, Jamil, and uh, really a lot of us in the hobby have these things, I think, to help us um, evaluate, help us be more efficient. Um, and I think you should gift yourself with a few of these. So uh, let's get into it um, as we are looking at, first off, First thing, something that I think every card person should have, um, especially you folks who do grading, and that is a caliper. Uh, that is a caliper. Now, I know that sounds a little weird, but these are uh, uh, digital devices, and then there's manual devices to help you measure items. So for me, as a guy who gets a lot of cards that come through the shop, some vintage, some more newer, uh, Pokemon, different kinds of things, uh, you have to check size requirements, right, of um, uh, cards. So we have a digital caliper here. Let me put it up on screen. You can see some better uh, images of it. So this is one I just picked off Amazon. This is a super simple caliper. I'm not endorsing any of these products for any specific reason or whatnot. This is a digital caliper. Uh, you can buy this off Amazon, and uh, it tells you how to. Uh, it tells you down to the uh, what is that tenth uh, decimal point um, where your card measures up to be. So why is that important? Well, when I look at vintage cards, a lot of times um, taking them, I'll measure the course, the distance here. Uh, from uh, top to bottom, the, dis the distance as, you know, of course, the width as well. And what's cool is uh, on the digital caliper, it'll give me a reading. So what you're looking for most of the time is somewhere around, hopefully your card is right there, uh, width-wise, so 2.5. And it'll give you those, those measurements. Um, so I usually measure the card always from the, like if I'm doing it um, from the base that way and then also from the top, and then I'll also do it that way on both edges because I think it's very important to look out for trim and those kind of things. So this is a digital caliper. I paid, I want to say, I don't know, it was really cheap. I want to say 15 bucks or something like that. Every person should have a digital caliper. And if you don't want to get too fancy, you can just buy a little manual caliper. They have these manual calipers as well um, off the websites. You can grab those things. So that's one, one gift that I think you definitely should have. Here's a look at what the manual calipers look like. Um, and you can take a look and measure these cards, specifically cards that you're getting uh, into your uh, collections. Maybe you're going out and you're buying stuff. Um, and again, people are like, oh, I don't need those for modern cards. Um, that's not true. Uh, that's not true at all. If you are someone who knows a little bit about Topps Chrome 2019, uh, you know what I'm talking about with the Alonzos and the Guerreros and the Tatisas as they were all a little short. So a uh, great little tool you should have is a caliper. So there's number one on my Christmas list for you guys is go buy yourself a caliper. I think it's definitely um, helpful to uh, evaluate cards and look at cards uh, from the measurement side. You know, many of you will send cards in vintage especially and you'll get PSA or Beckett with the minimum or maximum size requirement. Sometimes those cards have been trimmed. Um, so it's good to take a look at it. Some of them obviously haven't. Sometimes they've just been cut too small or cut too big. But again, saves you a lot of headache 
from grading fees and not having a card to come back with no PSA or PGS label, right? All right, so that's number one. Number two, what's number two on the list? Ah, this is one of my favorites. So for those of you who like to uh, film, um, I'm learning a little bit more about breaking. We do a lot of breaks with our store. Um, but I think the biggest thing for filming is that you're making pay, you're, you're paying attention to the audience, right? You're making sure that when they see your cards, whether it be off a phone or a, a uh, you know a little webcam you have on a tripod or something, is that the, the, the image looks good, but also that doesn't really move much. And so this is one thing that I found is very, very helpful is these little tripod stands. I, or not tripod stands, these little uh, hanger stands, I call them. And these ones are very adjustable. They have a hole in the back for um, uh, charging. Uh, this is one. This is the Emoton one that I get off. Uh, I got off Amazon. I think they're like 12 bucks or something like that. Another thing about this that I love is that the base is heavy. It's not so flimsy like those little tripod bendable ones a lot of people use. I love these. They're so simple to use. Go buy yourself one of these, especially if you're someone who likes to show off breaks. You do little sales. Uh, I think it's a really, really cool gift for yourself to have. It'll really further your uh, production value if you do a lot from your, for your mobile device. So I found this to be very helpful um, as I do breaks specifically off Instagram when we do our Instagram live stuff. So there's uh, another little gift that maybe you should purchase this Christmas, put in your, uh, your stocking. Uh, going along the lines of things with resale, um, this is a one, and again, you might be able to get away with a cheaper variety. There's some cheaper ones. This is one that I like. Uh, it's an Avery Monarch one. But the third item I have, especially for you guys who do shows or who are trying to reprice things, is take some money and invest in a price gun. Holy cow, do I see so many people who do not have price guns. It shows things, and they've literally handwritten all these things and stickers on their cards. They didn't take the 20, 30, 40, 50 bucks to invest in a quality price gun. These ones run about 40, 50 bucks. Um, and it is so much easier when you price your stuff, if you are a pricer, whether the front or the back of the card, to use one of these guys. And I tell you what, I used to be a, a guy who did shows when I first started out, and I would think, nah, I can't write rookie card, or I can't write SP, or I can't write what it's numbered out of. Listen, you can still do that on top of this, but these kind of things will save you a ton of time, a ton of time. So go outside and buy yourself a price gun. Uh, a lot of people don't think about it. They don't want to spend the money. Trust me, it is well worth it uh, to go out there and buy yourself a price gun, especially if you are an uh, avid uh, reseller. Another good thing to use price guns for is price your items. Instead of literally writing memo pads and all take the back of a card. If you want to follow and track things, a lot easier than a lot of people don't even think about this. Just put the price on the back of the card or what you paid for it. Maybe write the date in it if you want. Do whatever. These price guns are very, very helpful. Uh, I would recommend buying a price gun that does not have like a cheap sticker. Uh, some of those labels that use cheaper stickers um, unfortunately come off very easily. So I do like the Monarch. And then go and, of course, buy yourself some extra ink and rolls. But they work very easily. So third item that you should be buying. All right, fourth item. Uh, if you don't have a pack of these and you don't use these, you, where you been? Where you been and where you been? All right. These are, um, there's a kind of a story, a backstory of these. I started using another version of this, the earlier version. They were called Perfect Fit, and they were made by a guy, I think, in Canada. I think the, the business got too big for him because he couldn't keep up with demand, but he was hand-cutting these. Well, now uh, Cardboard Gold and some of these other companies have come out with the Perfect Fit for both um, Beckett and PSA. And you usually can pick up a pack of these, 50 of them, for... Uh, you know, four or five bucks from your local card shop, maybe six, I don't know, where, whatever. Um, I love these for a lot of reasons, but the most important thing that I love them for is it, I believe, adds an element of presentation to your cards. So whether you are a just a collector and you want to look at your cards and make sure they look nice, or you're looking to resell, uh, I tell you what, these little guys will make you more money. There's something about buying cards from somebody that's put their cards in nice sleeves and has made them look nice um, and the presentation of it that really I think attracts a buyer and it makes them feel a little bit more at ease. These PSA ones are, are, are great. Uh, the Beckett ones are great that uh, that, that uh, Cardboard Gold makes. There's other ones out there as well. Go out and buy yourself a pack. Try them out. Trust me, as a avid uh, sports card or Pokemon card or gaming card person, you will love these. Uh, they are really, really cool. I think they, uh, they do wonders for um, the hobby. They do wonders for uh, especially your nicer cards. Maybe you just want to put your high-end cards in them. But uh, that's the perfect fit sleeves. They make it for PSA, BGS, SGC, and other kind of things. So, all right, moving down this list. What is that? One, two, three, four. We've done four items you already got to get. 
Uh, let me show you something I found out this year that I really like for you memorabilia heads. I don't know if you know that they make these, but they actually, you ready for this? Have one touches, one touches for 8x10s. So these are super dope. They're expensive, but they're super dope because um, if you got a really nice autographed 8x10 and you don't want to put it in the top loads at Ultra Pro or whoever, you know, uh, uh, the other companies that make it, uh, Cardboard Gold or whatnot, is they these magnets are super, super helpful. Um, I think that they make your stuff look really nice. So these came out not too long ago. If you can find them, the 8x10 Ultra Pro One Touches, they are super, super dope for you memorabilia collectors. I like it. I'm going to start getting more of these and displaying 8x10s for my personal collection. I have a, a personal collection of, um, not a lot of them, but uh, commentators, specifically guys who have passed, Stuart Scott, Craig Sager, and I just and, and I'm just kind of celebrities who I think uh, maybe are behind the scenes. Alex Trebek, uh, he's another guy. He's not really a commentator, but he was somebody who hosted a show. And um, just guys that I, I think are cool. I'm going to try and get them all in there. So these 8x10s, I just saw them. We've, we've stocked them in store. Uh, we don't have a lot of them, but try and find those. Those are really, really cool. I think you should buy one, especially if you're a memorabilia head. Try it out. And last but not least, I know a lot of you will probably think, ah, Jamil, why are you telling me to buy this? I already have this. But um, you got to get on uh, microfibers. So uh, just a quick little bit here, and then we'll close up the episode, talk about what's coming out this week. But for you Christmas folks out there or, or just want to celebrate the holidays, whatever holiday you're celebrating, um, I, there's two types of microfibers in my mind. You have the cloth ones that are a little bit more uh, softer. You can think of them as the rag microfibers. And then you have the more precision ones. These are like lens cleaners for glasses. You know, four eyes over here with my uh, my Hubble Space Telescope lenses. Um, <laughs> I use these as well quite frequently for my glasses. But you can buy a lot of these online. You can get them pretty cheap. Here's what my thought is between the cloth and those uh, these ones here. The cloth ones, uh, to me, are the best for, uh, in my opinion, uh, prism and things like that, fingerprints, and just kind of trying to you know make your car look presentable before you put it in a semi-rigid. Um, sometimes these, uh, the glass ones, depending on how they're made, can actually scratch cards, specifically refractors and stuff like that from the 90s. So be very careful when you're uh, purchasing uh, these and how you use them. Uh, maybe try them on some base cards and some some older older cards before you before you do it. But uh, you gotta have yourself some microfiber cloths. I like these ones because uh, I don't know what this is. They remind me of Mr. Clean. Um, in some way, but they work really well. We use them here in shop. They're easy to see, so we need to grab one. Uh, we also use these as well. You know, when, when you're handling cards and, and you just want to make them, you know, look the best, you just want to get the fingerprints off and, and give them a wipe down before you put them in your semi-rigid to send them off for grading. Um, just a quick tidbit on that. I do not wax. I do not, I do not think waxing is smart. I think that's altering cards. Uh, at me if you want. Um, it's altering cards. And for those of you, just a quick disclaimer, who are waxing out there, listen, you're gonna get found out and these companies are canceling accounts and they're coming up with proprietary softwares to really catch you. So stay away from it. And for those who don't know what I'm talking about, people are waxing Chrome cards quite regularly. Um, this is the Christmas season, so I wanna be nice. But um, I'm starting to see cards and I have examples of them who uh, the waxes and the varnishes, whatever they're using, the polishes, are starting to show on these under these labels. It's a bad, bad thing. Don't do it. I'm on the anti-wax. Uh, Anti-polish, do not do that. Uh, we in the shop do not do it. We do not um, encourage people to do that either. So um, microfibers are used really just to, to clean the imperfections and fingerprints and if you got some dust, things like that. But um, be very mindful. I'm not telling people to wax. I want to be, care be clear on that. Okay, um, what comes out this week in the shop? If you, if, you, if you don't know, there's a big release coming out. I'll get to it in a second. Go buy these things for yourselves. Get, get on these. These are little things that I just thought of would be Great, great stocking stuffers, great little presents to one to one uh, to go out there and just uh, maybe make life a little easier for however you uh, uh, venture and in, in work in this hobby. All right, to my behind me right here, to that way. I'm not I'm not very good at pointing with things. There it is. Flawless basketball comes out on Wednesday. Um, happy flawless week to everybody. 1920 flawless. It is the second to last release for basketball this year. We will see eminence obviously, but flawless basketball comes out. It is a very limited product. It is highly sought after. Uh, uh, Panini is putting it on their website tomorrow for $6,200 plus tax, so $6,700, somewhere in that range, depending on where you live, uh, per box. That's the Panini site. They'll probably sell out. The secondary market on this is crazy. The FOTL, if you don't know about Flawlesses, um, there's a lot of hype around this product. Uh, there is a LeBron Zion dual logo man 101 people are chasing. It is a really, really cool. I think they did a great job with this. I heard it was extremely limited, uh, not just from uh, directly from Panini, but from distributors and from everybody else. 
So look forward to that. Have fun. Obsidian football comes out this week, and so does Bowman's Best Baseball. So should be fun. Uh, Merry Christmas to everybody. Holla to you people out there. Appreciate the fans and everybody out there who supports Slap Stocks and Mealy Stocks. Mealy Stocks obviously being a, 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 um, uh, a part of the Slap Stocks network. And I uh, love what we've done here in 2020 together. Uh, we'll have one more episode, I think, next week. And we'll probably do a recap here from the, the hobby side. But until I see you, have a very Merry Christmas. And I will see you next week. Take it easy.